Okay, you're live. Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess we're live. Um, back here again for Shield Showing uh, Live, uh, our third installment. Um, again, want to thank everybody for joining us in the last couple of weeks. We've really, uh, like Jam was saying, we've got a lot of different views and comments, so greatly appreciate it. Um, I noticed today I, I do have other clothes, I promise you, but I keep wearing the same shirt for the last three times. So I do promise I do have other clothes and these are clean. Uh, maybe I'll try to wear something different next week. Uh, but again, we're here today to demonstrate a, a, another machine. Today we'll be demonstrating uh, the Presto 2. Uh, once again, we will have some special pricing at the very end, so stick around. Um, I'm also going to do a small tutorial on cleaning out your machine. This will apply to uh, most brothers and baby lock machines with the top load bobbin. So I'll come join in at the very end after Jan gets done with uh, her little demo. And, um, but again, yes, happy Groundhog Day. And uh, thanks for joining us. Maybe that's why it's the same course. Maybe. I, yeah. It's like, I keep on, I'm on repeat, you know, it's on loop. <laughs> so uh, again, thanks. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, comment, uh, ask any questions you have and I'll let Jan take it away and I'll be back in a little bit to show you what, uh, my little spiel. So have fun. See you in a bit. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Okay. So um, we're going to work on, we got a few, oh, we got a few people coming in here. So we'll wait for just a couple seconds and make sure that on Facebook that you make sure you, you like comment and share on Facebook um, to keep going, you know, keep our, keep our little show going and have people finding us. I am having people find us. So it's been kind of fun. And I, I really, we were talking about this just a minute ago. I really enjoyed doing these because, um, then I have all the sewing machines here, you know, like at home, I have my machine only. And so you only get to see my machine, but here I have all of these. So it's really fun <laughs> to be able to see all these different, use all these different machines and show you all these different things. So, okay. So let me switch my camera over. Um, we're going to go ahead and talk about the Presto 2 today. The Presto 2 is a sewing machine. So let me get my camera moved over here. And it's a sewing machine. It's an electronic sewing machine. And let me get my camera and my microphone. There we go. Okay. So now you should be able to hear me okay. Hopefully everybody can still hear me all right. All right. So here is the Presto 2. The Presto 2 is an electronic sewing machine. And um, really nice machine. It this is one that um, that is a nice kind of entry level electronic machine. Nice features, not tons and tons of stitches on it, and it and it's very versatile. Um, but a nice basic machine. And and we just wanted to show everything um, on this machine. So we're just going to do some basics on it. I wanted to, I'll just show you kind of what I usually show a customer when they come in um, with this. So the first thing I like to do is I like to talk just a little bit about threading the machine. So let's um, let's wind a bobbin and thread the machine. How about that? So we'll do that. This is going to be very similar to other machines that we've shown you. So I have my thread here, and this is my Mettler thread. Really like Mettler thread. Great, great, strong polyester thread, and it's very smooth. So it work, runs for the machines very, very well. So if you haven't tried it, please do. Um, I am going to put my thread on the machine and you can see that it's the threads coming out from underneath the, the, the thread okay underneath the spool now let's do let's wind a bobbin first so to wind a bobbin you can see that we've got different lines here everything's pretty much marked for you and the dashed lines are for the bobbin winder and the solid lines are for the threading so we went through the threading a little bit with the machine uh, a couple weeks ago but this is going to be very similar okay so I've got my thread on. I'm going to go ahead and wind a bobbin first. So I'm going to start out with one, two. So it's going to go up here, one, two. And then this is the bobbin winder area. And the top, the stuff thing is on the top. I don't know if I can get this high enough for you to see it. But can you see the little picture on the top of that? So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take the thread behind the little point that's sticking out right here. And I'm going to pull it down between that and the little button that's on the top right here. And then I'm going to pull the thread under the button. That is the tension. So make sure you have it under there. Because if it's not under there, all the thread's going to go down underneath this gray thing over here, which is very annoying. <laughs> so you don't want that to happen. All right, so there's my thread. Then I'm going to take my bobbin. Here's my bobbin. Okay. Class 15 bobbin. I'm going to put it up on the bobbin winder here, maybe. So I can hear I'm stuck. For some reason, I'm stuck. There we go. Now, 
these bobbins, I don't know if you know it or not, but there is actually like a little split in them. And if you turn it, the bobbin might slip into this little notch. There's, there's like a little spring in there. And if you turn your bobbin before you start winding it, it'll slide into that little notch and it, it'll make a little audible click. And then your your I think your bobbin tension's a lot better. So just make sure you do that. That's one little thing I wanted to show you today. So then I'm gonna take my bobbin thread and I'm gonna wrap it around the bobbin clockwise, maybe six or seven times, okay? Then I'm going to cut it off underneath. So this has one of these really easy set bobbin, um, the, the bo easy bobbin winders. You do not have to go up through the old, the old style, like up through the holes in the top of the bobbins anymore. And it's so much easier. So, so this is going to hold my thread right under here where I cut it off. Then I'm going to push the bobbin over to the bobbin winder. And I'm going to hit the start stop button down here. Can you see the yellow bobbin? It started um started it turned yellow down here so i'm going to hit that and then i am going this is the speed control right here so this will make my bobbin wind faster okay then you can wind as much bobbin thread as you want and then if you don't want it to be full we're not going to make it full today i'm just going to hit the same button down here and turn it off if you have the foot controller hooked up you would let go of the foot controller. Now, I don't happen to have a foot controller today. I'm just going to use the button, okay, to run the machine. So I'm just, I'm done now. I'm going to push this over, pull the bobbin off, and then I'm going to just cut it off on that little cutter again. And here's my bobbin that's all ready to be put in the machine. And again, that little split thing, you can kind of see the split in the bobbin here. That's a little thing that fits on there. And that's where the little click is going to be. I don't know if I can get it to click for you here. If you listen cl closely, did you hear it click? So there's a little click. And that's why if you do that with your bobbin, then, then they don't spin like a half a spin before they start catching. So it's pretty cool. All right. So here's my bobbin. So we're going to put that down here for a minute. And then we're going to put that in the machine. So let's go ahead and thread the machine. So this is very similar to the 1700 that we did a couple weeks ago. So I've got my thread on still on there. You always also want to make it have a cap that is larger than your thread spool. Now this is the medium size one. There's also a small, and I didn't bring all of the caps out. That would be very appropriate for the spool, also the small one, because it would still extend out past the spool of thread. So make sure your cap extends out past your spool thread, but not too much. This one's okay, but I probably should have gotten the small one out, okay? This is the medium. All right, so then we're gonna thread the machine. We're going to follow the straight line. So if you give me a second, I'm going to pull the camera up just a little bit so you can see the whole side of the machine. We're going to go, whoops here. We're going to go one, two, just like we started with the bobbin winder. And then we went this way with the bobbin winder to the right. But now we're going to go to the left and two number three is down. Now you also notice, can you see down here that my foot is up? Okay, my foot is up when I'm threading my machine. So I'm going to go one, two, and then two comes down around and I'm following the arrows. Here's the arrow. And then three is straight down. Four is going to be up and over. So when you get up here, can you see my thread? I'm just going to swing my arm to the right and then to the left again. And it's going to slide right into that little take up lever. Okay. So there's a little take up lever in here. And if you kind of have to swing your arm from right to left and it just slides right in there, you don't have to move your hand wheel. Don't, in fact, I tell people with these machines, don't use your hand wheel, pretend it's not there anymore. Cause we've got a little start, we got a little needle up and down button down here. Okay. Then number five, straight down. Okay. Number six, let me bring this down. Okay, number six is this little notch right above the needle and you have to give it a little tug to get it in there okay because it's kind of tight so i'm going to show you what a common mistake is in threading this machine okay let's say i'm threading my machine and i get up here to number four and look there's a little door right there can you see the little door in there this is a common mistake. What that means is your foot is down. So if you get up to the number four and you can't see that little lifter thingy in there, okay, that means your door is closed. This little door is closed. 
that means your foot is down. So it's very important that the foot is up. Now see how the little door is gone? Foot needs to be up while you're threading your machine. And that goes for all of the machines. A lot of the machines have that little door now to kind of, you know, like forewarn you that, oh, your foot is down, okay? So they put that little door on there and when the foot's down, it slides over that little hole, okay? All right, so I'm just gonna do it one more time since I've been messing around here with the foot up and down. So we'll just go one, two, okay? Crossed, down, number three is down here. Four is the lifter. So I'm just gonna go one, two like that. Straight down for five. And second, I gotta move the camera down. You can't see number six very well. Number six down here, and it's this little, lip, the little guide right above the needle, number six. And then this has an automated needle threader on it, which is super awesome. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hang on to my thread and I have my foot up. Okay, I'm gonna leave my foot up for a minute and I'm gonna use my needle up and down button before I try to thread this machine. This is very important. I do this every time before I try to thread my machine because then I know my needle is in the upright position, okay? So here is a needle up and down button. I'm gonna push this down. If I tip this just a little bit, you can see the foot. Needle down, needle up. Then you know that the foot is all, or the needle is all the way in the upright position. So if you try to use your hand wheel, it, will, it may stop slightly lowered or slightly up, and then you're gonna bend your needle thread. So just use this needle up and down button, down, up, and then you know you're ready to go. You can also do that at the very, very beginning before you try to thread the machine at all, okay? And I often recommend that. So just a second here, I'm gonna click on this so that I can see your comments a little bit better. Okay. That way, sometimes I don't always see all the comments. Um, oops, second here. I don't always see all the comments unless I have it on the other computer here. So give me a second here to get it going. I have to refresh. Okay, there we go. All right, now I can see your comments. Okay. That's what I needed to do. Now I can read better. Okay. All right, so now we we're ready to thread the machine. So down here, you know, we got it in number six, we're going to go across the notch right here. There's like a little notch in this metal thing right here. Just going to lay it in that notch and then push it into number seven, which is this gray thing right here. This is number seven. You probably can't see the seven on it. And then I'm going to pull it back and there's a cutter on the left and I'm gonna cut it off. So I cut my thread off, it's holding it again for me. And then I'm gonna put my foot down. I wanna get the foot out of the way before I try to thread my machine. And I'm gonna push this button down. There's a button over here, can you hear it? On the left, I'm gonna push it all the way down until it clicks and it just threaded the needle for me. Okay. okay, so that needle threader is pretty awesome and it's very easy. So six is the guide, crossed, push it into number seven, cut it off on number eight, and number nine is the handle to, to thread the needle. And the needle is now threaded, okay? So a lot of the machines have the same needle threader on it. Now I'm gonna raise my foot and I'm gonna put my thread under the, the foot like that. I always want to put my thread under my foot because otherwise it will unthread and could possibly not. Okay, so now let's put the bobbin in. This bobbin's going to be the same as our 1700 the other day. So we're going to make the letter P. I'm going to take the, the thread and make the letter P. So it's going to hold up in front of me, make the letter P with the thread coming off the left. And I'm just going to tip it over. So the thread's still over here on the left. I'm going to lay it into the bobbin case like that. And then there's a little arrow that goes from here and around. So I'm going to put my finger on the bobbin under the arrow and up and over and cut it off. So there is my installed bobbin and you do not have to um, pull up the bobbin thread. You can just start sewing because it's going to hold it for you there. Okay. So here's our bobbin. Do it one more time. Letter P, tip it over. Thread still on the top left, and then slide it under the little arrow and across, and cut it off. 
and you are set. So most of the machines um, have this type of have this kind of bobbin on them. So they are pretty cool and they're very, very simple to do and you do not have to pull your bobbin thread up. But just remember before you try to thread, make sure you use the needle up and down button. And in fact, I do that almost every single time I thread my machine, whether it be my embroidery machine, my sewing machine, whatever it is, I use this button before I try to thread because then I know my needle has gone all the way down and all the way up, especially if you've changed a needle or if you've broken a needle because then the needle bar sometimes stops in a different place. So that's very important, okay? That's like the number one thing. Okay, so that's the first thing I show everybody. I like to show everybody how to thread the machine, how to wind a bobbin. Now there's a couple things on this machine that I wanna show you. Um, I, <laughs> when the machines come out of the box, you turn this just a little bit, okay? When the machines come out of the box, um, they come up on stitch number one. And that means that these this little keypad right here, okay? And number one is right here. So if you look at the, the picture, you can see that the stitch is kind of on the left. Now, most of the machines are like this. And the needle plate markings on the machine are set up for the needle to be on the left. So like if you're looking at the markings back here on this needle plate, you can see the lines probably, but they have numbers on them too. The needle is set up to be over here on the left, but I learned to sew with the needle in the center. So I do have a hard time sewing straight with the needle in the center. So what I'm going to show you how to do is set up this machine so that you will always come up in with the needle in the center. I know then that my numbers on my needle plate, and this goes for all of the machines, are going to be slightly off. They're about an eighth of an inch short because the needle is going to be slightly to the left or to the right, excuse me. Okay, so this machine right now is set so that it will come up with the needle on the left and I want it to be in the center so I don't break my needle on like my piecing foot, okay? So this machine has a little button and this little button here, it's the little um, needle button right here. This one will allow me to change that position. So I'm just gonna touch it one time. And if you see this little icon up here, it now shows the needle in the center of this, like the sewing area. If I push it again, it looks like it's on the left, okay? So I wanna push it one time so it shows in the center. And now if I turn this machine off and turn it back on again, it comes up, oh, look, it comes up on number three. Well, if I look at my number three down here, that is my needle in the center. Many of the machines that have a settings page that have a button that looks like a piece of paper you can do the same thing on those machines in there. This one just happens to have the button on the outside of the machine. So that's one of the things I, I, I often like to change that. That's a very good thing to change that makes it easier for me. And then the second button down that we'll talk about today is having the needle stop in the down position. I like my needle to stop down. When I stop sewing or stop sewing, it stops down. And it is in, out of the box that way. So um, if you see this second little icon up here, it looks like a needle and there's a little line and then it's down through the, the little line. That means it's gonna stop down. If I touch that button one time, the needle is above the line. So it's gonna stop in the up position. So some people do like that better. So go ahead and change that. So we're gonna just talk about two buttons today. All right, so I'm gonna stop it in the down position again. Okay, so those are the two buttons I like to show people right away when they look at this machine because that's something that may they may need to change. Okay, now let's do a little sewing and then we'll talk just about a little bit about what all these other buttons do. I'm not going to show you everything today. I'm just going to show you some of it so you have an idea, you know, how to get into some of this. So these main 10 buttons right here, just a little key bad, those are the main basic stitches. So Number one is going to be the straight stitch on the left, and so is two. Three and four are the straight stitch in the center needle position. Five and six are the zigzag stitches. Seven is going to be the stretch stitch that you might use for knits. Eight is the stretch zigzag that you might use for knits as well. Nine 
is going to be the, um, it's like a um, overcasting stitch. And it tells you what foot to use on the machine. So as you notice, some of these as I'm going here, it told me on this one, this is the first one, it told me to use the letter G. That's the other thing I love about the screen. It tells you what foot to put on the machine. They're all labeled in this little box. They have the labels on the little box. And G happens to be the overcasting foot. So that's one overcasting stitch there. Okay. So it told me I have to use that foot. And then if I go down to zero, zero is the three point zigzag. So instead of just going one side to the other side, it goes, it has three points and it goes one in the center on each side and goes around. Okay. So that's the difference between zero and like five and six. And they're both zigzags, but they're just different types. I use the one with the point in the center, like for elastic sometimes, because then I want to have a point that's sewn in the center too. Okay. All right. So that's the other thing I'm watching up here on my screen as I'm doing different stitches. So like if we go back to number nine, see it went back to G. And if I go to a straight stitch or a zigzag, see it says J. J is the regular side, regular foot. And that's the one that comes on the machine generally. Okay. And then as you get into different stitches, then it will tell you different letters there. Okay, so we are going to do a little buttonhole too today. All right, so there, well, let's just do a little stitching. I'm just going to put it on number three, which is a straight stitch in the center. You get the piece of fabric here. We'll just sew a straight line. This is a very nice, quiet machine. And let me get this. And I am going to sew without a foot controller so i'm going to lower my needle with the down needle down button okay so I, I like to start on fabric with my needle in the fabric when i start sewing it's less likely to unthread and it also does not go down into the zigzag plate okay so here's my start stop button here's my um speed control i'm going to turn it down a little bit since i don't have my foot controller i'm just going to start sewing so here's my straight stitch. And when I'm done sewing, when I don't have my foot controller, I hit the same button. It stops the machine. And then this one is an awesome button. This is the cutting button. So I'm just going to hit the cutter and it's going to cut off my thread, lift my foot, and then it just leaves the two little, like two little tails in the back. Okay. I love the cutter. The cut, this is the first, first electronic machine that has that cutter. It is awesome. Okay. Okay. So there's our straight stitch. Now, so I usually, this is usually what I show people um, when they, when they come to look at this machine is a couple of those buttons that we looked at, how to thread it, how to put the bobbin in. And then I wanted to show you then a little bit about, there's a bunch of other menus. Okay. So let's look at the lid here and I'll just briefly describe what you do. So there's a little menu area here. And there's an icon here, here, and then there's one more that you can't quite see. Right here, it has the letter A. So this one has also has letters on it, okay? But what's neat is this is how you get into all of these stitches. So this is mostly utility style stitches, and these are mostly decorative stitches, and then you have lettering fonts, okay? So in order to get to these stitches here, I first have to find the menu icon and press it down below here. So I want to do the first one, which looks like a stitch, a zigzag, and a like a buttonhole. And that's going to be down here. And I'm going to find the same one on my machine. So right now, we're in this one that looks like the little keypad. OK, that's the main menu that will come up when you turn the machine on. But I want to be in this one. So I'm going to touch this one. And now it says I'm in that menu. So it shows me right here on the screen, okay? Then I want to choose a different stitch. So let's say that I wanna choose a, um, oh, let's see, we wanna choose a buttonhole, okay? So buttonholes, if I go back up here, these are all the buttonholes down here, okay? The buttonhole I want to choose is number 58. And you probably can't see the number very well, but it's number 58. So then, since I'm in that menu, I can come down here and I can choose the number 58 and type it in. And now it shows me up here. That's what number I'm on. Shows me 
that I need the A foot, which is the buttonhole foot. And then it sets up a length and width for my, um, my stitch for me automatically. With the circles here, that means that that is the default. And then if I wanna change that, I can change the sizes with these little buttons right here. So this is the length and the width. So when, when I go away from that, see how the little circle went away? Okay, and here's another one. Now these defaults for the buttonhole are pretty good. And of course, most of the stitches that I choose, so if I go back to like the straight stitch on the, the old main menu here, we'll hit that button again. Here's that main menu. If I go to stitch number three, which it's on, the, the needle position's at 3.5. That means it's the center because it's a seven millimeter machine. And then here's my length of stitch. Okay, so I can change those. So that's the, the buttons that I change my lengths and my widths with. So it's very simple. There's not a lot of buttons on this machine. Okay, so that that's what, so we're going to go ahead and make a buttonhole. I want to show you a buttonhole. Um, buttonholes are kind of fun to make on this and they're super easy and automated. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to that other uh, menu again. And then I'm going to click in, I think it was 58. Okay, so it says I need the A foot. And I'm going to leave the default settings. They should be fine. So give me a second here. I'm going to grab my A foot. This is my A foot. This is the buttonhole foot. And I have a button. So I'm going to take my button here. Whoops. So if I just drop the foot on the floor. Only on live TV, right? Okay. So here's my foot. And then this little thing back here is so easy. This opens up. And I'm going to stick the buttonhole or the button into the, the foot. And I'm going to bring it down so that it matches, you know, it, it clamps onto my little button there. Okay. Very simple. Now I'm going to remove this other foot. So this is the J foot, the standard one that we usually use. And I'm going to, there's a button on the back of the foot. You can kind of see where my finger is. I'm going to push that and it drops off. And I'm going to go ahead and put this on. There's a little bar right here, and there's a little notch in this foot thing, the shank it's called. And I'm going to slide this under here, and I'm going to drop that foot down onto that bar. And I'm a little off. There we go. So dropped on there. Okay. So there's my buttonhole foot. The button is in the back of the foot. Okay. Now, to make the buttons there's a cool magic little thing we have to do so to make this automated right back here behind the needle threader and i don't know if you can even see it i can't quite get it so you can see it there's a little handle that's going to pull down it's right here so the little gray thing coming down and there's two little fingers on this foot i'm going to go ahead and bring it down in between the fingers pull it all the way down as far as it comes and it needs to be in between those little fingers because that little finger is going to bonk on this little this little foot and it's going to turn the buttonhole around so it'll go two different directions and we don't have to do a thing other than keep it from getting crooked so we're going to do buttons we're going to do a buttonhole and it's going to make the buttonhole the size of my foot or i've set the size of my my uh, button that i put in there because i it, it's going to read that size okay so i'm going to go ahead and drop my needle into my machine and i'm going to hit the start button and it's going to make my buttonhole and look see i'm not doing anything i didn't have to measure it's going to measure for me i just love making buttonholes when i remember making i, I used to go to all these doll classes and all the ladies would hand me their doll clothes and to make the buttonholes because i knew how to make run my buttonholer and it made such beautiful buttonholes super simple All right, so then it's going to tie off and it's going to stop and then I can hit the cutter up here and it will cut off the thread and here is my buttonhole. Okay, so here's the buttonhole. Give me a second here and they give you a little seam ripper, you know, with your machine. Maybe if I can get a hold of it. Out of here. Here it comes. They, they have little clips in here. Sometimes the seam ripper is hard to get out. Okay. Then I'm going to take my seam ripper and we're going to open this buttonhole up. 
So here's my buttonhole. I'm going to go down at the end. So what I'm going to do, how many people have gone through the other end of your buttonhole with the seam ripper? I'm going to go up into the center so I can't possibly rip my seam buttonhole open. I'm going to go down and at the end I'm going to go up so I can't possibly go through my end. There we go. So there's my buttonhole. And that button that's on my buttonhole. Oops. But will easily fit into my buttonhole. So there's my buttonhole and that nice nice size for it. Okay. So see how easy that is? I just love making buttonholes on these machines. They're so easy and it's kind of a wow foot. You know, it just makes it so easy and you clamp it in there and everything is completely automated. <laughs> Okay, then the other thing I wanted to show you was you can actually, did you know, and this works with most of the machines. Now, the most of the sewing machines have this type of buttonhole foot. Um, if you have some of the bigger ones, you use the thread cutter with the needle down. I thought I had to raise the needle up before I push the button. No, you do not. When, it, when it's down, yeah, if it's down like that, you can still, if you hit the cutter, it'll, it'll bring it up. No, you don't have to, you don't have to have it. You don't have to bring it up. You have to have the foot down to use the, the, the cutter. The foot has to be down. Okay. Because if I have my foot up, so if like if I put it, go in here and try to, to try to cut and put that foot on and I have my foot up and use the cutter, it's going to come up with an error message. If the foot's down, you can use the, the needle up or the needle can be down. So if the needle is down, it will still cut. Okay. But the, but the foot needs to be down for the, the, for the cutter to work. Okay. So did you know that you can, you can sew on your buttons with the, with the machine? A lot of people don't realize they can sew on their buttons with the machine. I love to sew buttons on with the machine and because I don't like to hand sew. And they give you a foot for that. So here's another little foot for the button. And what I'm going to do is take the J foot off again. And guess what? They also give you a stitch for the buttons. So I'm going to go up here. And this is the stitch for the buttons so on this machine. It's number 68. So I'm going to type in. I'm in the same. I'm already in that same menu because that's where we, the buttonhole was. So I'm going to type in the number 68. And did you know that most of the holes on buttons are the same width apart? Okay. I know, isn't the buttonhole nice? It's very, very, it, this is such a great buttonholer. All right. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to slide my, my button, kind of get it started here. I'm going to slide the button into this. And this is a four hole button. So we might, we'll, we'll do them both. Um, it works for two or four, but we're going to do two at a time. So I'm going to take my button and I'm going to try to get it lined up with those little red dots. See those little red dots? Okay. You want the buttonholes to be lined up with the little red dots. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this buttonhole foot or button. I, I call it the sew the button on foot. I think they call it button attachment foot or something like that. I call it the sew the button on foot. And I'm going to put that on to my little, maybe, little bar. It's being contrary. Did I get it? Oh, I think I got it. There we go. Okay, so I got it. Got my holes lined up. Now, I'm going to lay this under here. And this is the only time that I use my hand wheel. Because I want to make sure that I've got it lined up with my holes. Okay? Because I want the whoops, want the holes to be lined up. So you have to be careful that they are lined up. Okay, so that looks like we're lined up. Okay. All right, so I think we're good with that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use my 68. Okay, I'm gonna put my needle down in the hole. And I'm going to just do a little tie off. Oops, almost not going to let me do that tie off. Sorry, it's mad at me now. Just a second. Some of the machines have a different ways to tie on and off. So <laughs> this one didn't like it the way I usually do it on my machine. 
Okay, there we go. All right, so I got the needle down and I know it's going to go over into the other hole. So I'm going to slow it down. Okay, got my foot down. And I got my little lever back up. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go across and it's going to go back and forth and it's going to tie. Sew that button on and then I can I can hit the little tacking foot tacking button and it will tack it on. Okay. And then if I want to come back to this other holes here, these are the other holes, the back ones. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to lower it with my, yeah, make sure it's okay. Yep, I think we're good. I got it lined up. I have a little trouble sometimes getting it lined up. So I'm going to go ahead and go across and tie my button on. Sew my button on. And then tie it off a little bit and cut it. So there's my button. And if I pull this out here, it sewed my button on. Isn't that cool? I really love I love the sewing buttons on with the machine. So I use this quite a bit. And there's different ways you can do different kinds of buttons with this. You can't use the ones that the shanks are on the back, but you can use any of the flat buttons with it. And um, you can make kind of a shank because there's a little thing. I don't know if you can see it on the button foot here, but you can you can move this out to make it a little bit looser so it's not so tight to the garment. Oh, I know, isn't that awesome? <laughs> It is very easy, but so there's like a little thing in here. If you want to have your 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 uh, whole, your button looser, just push this out, and then it'll be taller so that it won't um, so that it won't um, make it as tight to the garment. I had mine pulled back so that it was tighter. But there's my button. So yeah, I use that quite a bit because I don't like to sew buttons on, and all the Kimberbell stuff I do, so much of it has buttons on it. Okay. So, that, so there's some buttonholes. We did a buttonhole. So let's look at some of these other feet in here. I think Tim's got a customer out there, so he's going to come back and do another little thing for us. But um, let's look at some of the other feet that are in here while we're doing this. Yeah, I, I make buttonholes all the time. It took me a long time to use the button, to you know, attach the, the buttons this way, but it's cool. This is the M foot. So that comes with basically all the machines. Um, and some of the other stitches, like... There's an R foot in here. This one comes with the machine. This is the R foot. This is the blind hemming foot. So if you need to blind hem like a, a skirt or a pair of slacks, that's that's the blind hemming. It has this little thing in the center. Okay. It is very important that you pay attention to the letters that are on the machine when it comes up with the foot so that you don't damage your machine or your foot by using the wrong one. So it is very important you use the correct one. Um, this is the I foot, which is the zipper foot. So here's that comes with it. We didn't use the M foot. That's the, the so the button on foot. And then there's another one called the N foot. The N foot is the one that you use for decorative stitches because it's kind of got like a little trough under here so that the decorative stitches will go under, under there and it will slide over those little heavier stitches. Okay, so that's the N and that will come up on the machine. We'll, I'll show you that one. And then the G, I showed you a little bit before, that one is the overcasting. And this is very important also to choose this one when you're using those stitches because they see there's a little thing in the center. You don't want to break that out or break your needle. Okay. All right. So that's G. All right. So let's go ahead and look, look quickly at the letters then while Tim is working with the customer. Okay. So the lettering is really fun in this machine and i don't have my little thing back here i need to look at the um baby lock doesn't put the little all the letters written out <laughs> so i'm gonna have to i'm just gonna have to do some a few letters i know a b and c are one two and three okay guys so we'll we'll do that i can't remember what all the numbers are i think like my name would be j so i'd have to count the letters to j so we'll just do a b c okay but you can go into these different fonts there's four fonts on this machine I'm going to touch down here first. Um, Baby Lock puts the little letters that tells you what the numbers are in the little um, uh, book, like in, in the quick reference guide. So I'm going to touch the A first. And there's different ones. So that's the straight letters. B, the second one, if you see it says A2 now, that one is like cursive letters. 
there's outline letters that are the third one. And then the fourth one is actually a Japanese letter. You know, it's a Japanese machine. You would think maybe they would put Japanese letters on it. So they did. So I'm going to do number one. Okay. And then if I want to, so I'd have my little book next to me. I forgot to get it out. That says which, which number all the letters are. So, and you do have to use two digits. So I want to do A, B, C. So I know it's 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. So I'm going to type in 0, 1. Okay. And then I'm going to type in 0, 2. And then I'm going to type in 0, 3. Now that is the first three letters. All the letters will sew at the same time. Okay. And then up here on my screen, then it's telling me I need the end foot. So the end foot is going to be this monogramming foot or it's, it's for the decorative stitches. So we're gonna put this one on. Okay. <clears throat> and let's sew out these letters. Okay. Put the foot down, put this thread under the foot. I'm gonna drop my needle and then let's, let's stitch this out so you can see. And it's just gonna say ABC. But these are really nice letters if you just need some basic small letters or like if you want to make a quilt label, they work great for that. And I just draw lines on my fabric so I can run across the um, across the um, a lines to keep them straight. Okay. And then I'm going to cut this off with the cutter. Okay. So there's my A B C. There it is. So they're about half inch letters. But they're very readable, and the and these are the these are the straight ones, and then there's a nice cursive one that looks really nice. But these are really great for um, labeling things, for putting. And then oh, Lynn asked about um, how to save it in the machine. This one does have some basic saving ability. This is the only saving ability you can do is with the letters. So let's say I needed to save this that I was going to write this over and over again. I can save. I hit this little button right here. Looks like a pocket. I save that, and it would save that into a little. The memory of the machine most of the machines have more memory ability this has very little because it's more of an electronic machine okay all right so we have done a buttonhole we have done our buttonhole we've set our button on and we've done some letters there's a lot of decorative nice decorative stitches on here this menu the main one up here is kind of your basic um utility style stitches um, I use stitch number 25 quite a bit. That one is the straight stitch, um, but it's the piecing stitch. So I can um, tr I can move the um, the needle to the right, and then I can run my fabric right along the right hand side of my foot, and it will be a quarter inch. So the, the needle is going to be kind of over here. Okay. Then um, some of these other ones, there's going to be um, some uh, appliqueing stitches, like E stitches. There's some decorative stitches. These are all buttonholes. There's a whole bunch of different buttonholes. And you can also, by the way, with your buttonhole foot, you can mend. There's like, these are like darning or mending stitches. And then the, uh, the other menu that's on here then is this one with the leaf. This one has actually got more decorative style stitches in it then. And then these are the letters over here, okay? So there's quite a lot with this machine and, and, and it comes with some nice, nice set. There's a few accessories I don't have out. Um, you can also purchase other ad additional feet for it. And, um, but I use this, mach this machine's a really nice, uh, oh, and the other thing I wanted to show you um, that I like to tell people about, this is the, the tension dial. So this still has an attention dial. What do I mean by an electronic machine? This is an electronic machine. It doesn't have really much saving ability. So, I mean, I consider it a computerized machine, one that that saves, Nance. So this one to me doesn't have really much for um, saving ability. It has a little teeny bit, but I would call this electronic because it is not, it has a board on it. And then they also make um, a more computerized machine that have more saving abilities for like, like some of the stitches, like let's say I want to do um, a stitch over and over again, I'm going to I'm going to have um, the same settings for it and then I can save it. This machine doesn't do that, but some of them do. OK. But this is the this is the tension dial. So this is set on number four from the factory and, and it normally should stay there. OK. 
Okay, so if if you need to move it off of four, then then there's something wrong. So leave it leave it on number four. Okay. Then the other thing I wanted to show you is this one. It's cool because it has. I'm going to bring this up. Hopefully it'll. Once I stop moving it, I think it'll. Wanting to be blurry on me. Sorry guys. Sometimes when you move the camera, it takes a minute for it to redo itself. Big Tim's back. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This dial, which you can't see very clearly, I, I do apologize, is the um, the presser foot pressure dial. So I can adjust how how hard my presser foot's pressing down. And so that is, um, that's on the top of this machine. And number three is normally where it is, but um, you can adjust it to make, make it less pressure or more pressure. Okay. So hopefully we can get the machine, we can get the camera to, it's being very frustrating today, Tim. Sorry see if I can get it to sometimes if I just do a couple things in front of it it'll finally ah there we go <laughs> we got it <laughs> yeah sorry guys sometimes it just it just doesn't um, react very quickly okay now Tim's going to show you something a little bit about um, I'm going to put this other foot on for you Tim in case you need this machine too um, a little bit about maintenance on these machines okay so he's going to show you if you need to clean out your bobbin case or if you hear a funny noise with your machine this may be why you're having that sound so i'm going to get out of your way so you can get in here all right i'll get in there all right i know you can't see me but we're going to go through cleaning the bobbin case on most brothers and baby locks cleaning out your bottom area i do recommend that you do clean it once in a while especially when you're using some of that uh linty stuff let's say um please Oh, my favorite is um, what's that? that? What's the fuzzy stuff? That... Please. Uh, no, what? Oh, minky. minky. I do not like that because it's really dirty. But anyway, so when you come to open this up, this little gray plastic piece will come off. You get in here, and we can pull all this out. Okay. It's key to leave this plate on here if you can. If you have to take it off, that's okay. When you clean this out, please try to use a vacuum or a brush rather than blow canned air in it canned air will put um moisture in there and also it's, all you're going to do is continue to push stuff further into the bobbin case area once again when we put this back in we've got to have the needle plate on first it doesn't make sense because this goes underneath of it but it's the only way you're going to get it in there the correct way so needle plate first you notice you got a white arrow there and a white dot there those two line up and it just sticks in there flush we're going to pop this on and we're back ready to go so what tends tends to happen is when you take that needle plate off and you don't put it in correctly you end up with this so we're gonna we're gonna switch machines here real quick i'm doing this using this machine because well i can all right we're both the way are we good yep okay so i i cleaned it out i put it back together Push this down. I start to sew. Well, that doesn't sound very good. All right. Well, it is because and see how it's all see how caught it's in all there. Gobbled up. <laughs> when I open this up, do you notice here this bobbin case is not in the right spot? That is because I put the bobbin case for in first and then the needle plate. So again, always remember needle plate first, slide the bobbin case in second. So that's your little maintenance tip of the day <laughs> and that and that's for goes for most of the machines with the exception now of the luminaire that has a one piece bobbin or, or like bobbin covers like a needle plate needle so plate. Yep. those we have to put the bobbin cases in first but the all the other machines you have to put the needle plate on first and so we just do remember that. we do spell, sell these special tools um a nickel or a quarter um <laughs> that's the easiest way to get these screws out so for 25 cents, you two can have a quarter. Yep. <laughs> um, so and they do really that that really works better than any of the screwdrivers. So <laughs> that is very true. So again, um, we'll have, me to, let yeah, me switch the camera. Back, yeah. Okay, we're gonna show you what you get if you purchase this machine. We have a kind of a little special today. So give me a second, get the camera back up here. Maybe this one, the other one was wanting to be irritable today. I don't know why. There we go. So let's do this. 
And let me get this out of our way. There we go. All right. So we do have the Presto 2. Once again, we have free shipping on it. Uh, special price today is uh, $7.99. And again, we can ship that to you. But we're also going to throw in this little starter uh, kit. Try to open it up. Basically, it's really nice. You get um, really nice scissors, really nice scissors um, a bunch of needles. needles. Uh, oh, one of those cool, those cool. Well, um, our machines don't make mistakes, so we'll take yeah. the seam ripper out. <laughs> the seam um, ripper is really cool. And some thread and, and, and some pins. So just a nice little starter kit that we're going to throw in. Um, normally, these run, I think, around 100 bucks. Yeah. So uh, just a nice little kit that we'll throw in if you decide you want to uh, buy one today. Um, what else we got? Uh, I wanted to mention oh, we're going to do. Uh, what are we going to do next week? Next week, I think we're going to try the IQ Designer. Yep, yep. IQ Designer Design Center. Yep. So we're going to do that um, on one of the machines. I'm not sure which one yet. We're not sure. We'll, <laughs> we'll figure we'll that do, out. We'll do something fun with, with that. So what that is, it's in the embroidery machines. So we'll do something fun in one of the embroidery machines next week. Uh, and then uh, last but not least, we are going to try to do a Super Bowl sale again this year. It's going to be a little different. Uh, it's going to be over a couple of days, and we're going to have some sales online. So if you don't feel comfortable coming in the store, we completely understand. But we're also going to do some stuff in the store. Uh, if you would like information on that, Give us your email. We'll be shooting out an email very, very soon. How you doing? <laughs> she just bought C-Peg, it. yes, you do. Come yes, on, come on I'll, in. Come we got one in. for you. I, 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 I just figured out what, what we're going to throw yeah, in. Yeah, I, so. I didn't even know what we were going to do until uh, after you left. But yes, Peg, you can you can definitely get one. Yeah. Um, but yes, so Super Bowl, we're going to start. It's going to be from Thursday the 9th through the 12th. So uh, it's going to be a couple days to kind of hopefully spread some people and not have as many big numbers in there. Um, but again, get us your email and we'll send um, send the information out on that. But uh, again, thanks for joining us again this week. Uh, we love doing this. It's really kind of fun. It gives us something something to do uh, on a Wednesday afternoon. Sometimes it's busy as today was kind of Yeah, busy. he was, I think people were just walking yeah, in and yeah, out. Selling the machines. Just, so, yeah, selling um, But yes, continue to like, uh, share um, with your friends and all that. We really, really appreciate it. Again, questions, feel free to, to email us, call us, all that good stuff. Um, I think that's it. So we'll see yep, you. So next week, same time. Same bat time, yep, same, same bat, bat channel. channel. Yep. So, <laughs> so we'll, we'll uh, and then we'll do some IQ designer slash design center, depending on the brand of machine you have. So um, I'm always glad. I'm always, that's always a fun thing that's to do. So we'll, yes. we'll play with that next week. So. so we'll see you next week. Alrighty. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Happy Groundhog Day.